Hey friends, how is it going? Ash here, welcome to Extra Gen Sense. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at Black Citrus from Wilhelm Parfumery. I've only ever done a review on one fragrance from this house and that was Morning Chess. Which I think everybody knows about that one because it smells similar to Creed Aventus. And uh, I gotta tell you, when you do like 50 different videos on something that smells like Creed Aventus, it gets old, it does. Start questioning your existence. And then uh, another new one comes out and you gotta do the whole thing all over again. So Black Citrus, this one is a little bit divisive. Some people don't really dig it all that much. If you go to Fragrantica, a lot of people say it sucks. I think it has like a three and a half on there. Now Fragrantica, you can't always trust <laughs> in case you're unaware. Um, a lot of people go on there just to troll and you know, crap on everything in existence. But when you smell this one, you, you kind of get it. You get that it wouldn't work for, for everybody. Now the idea behind it, is what the name is, black citrus. So you got a dark citrus, right? It sounds pretty easy. It sounds like a, an easy concept to wrap your head around. You're gonna make something that's fresh, citrus, but then you're gonna make it dark and mysterious. It sounds easier to pull off than it actually is. And that is where a lot of that divisiveness comes into play here uh, because some people don't really dig <laughs> Uh, what what they're doing here. And with this house, if you're interested in it at all, shop at twistedlily.com, use code GENTS10, save yourself 10% off. Good for the whole website, that's where I got this one at. So the house actually says that this is a gothic citrus. So I guess that means it's uh, an orange tree that listens to the cure or something, it dresses up in black leather and puts on heavy, uh, heavy eyeliner. I guess, or would it be gothic in the sense of like an old uh, gothic cathedral or something, you know, gargoyles on it and whatnot, I don't know. But then they also describe it as being uh, London after a rain. So the city after the rain, it's supposed to have this like fresh enlivening briskness, like everything, you know, coming back to life after this downpour, but then there's like a remnant of the storm and all this other stuff. And um, that almost seems like it was something tacked on after the fact, because uh, that happens a lot with fragrances where somebody writes a brief and you know, the fragrance is done and then after it's all done, you have to go back and retcon everything and come up with an idea for the fragrance, which kind of sucks, frankly, because it's like you get the fragrance done and you smell it and you like the way it smells. And then you have to sit there and go, wait a sec, what, how do we sell this now? Like, what's the story? What's the name? And then you got to try to work backwards from the finished fragrance. And like I said, retcon everything and make an idea that goes along with it, a story that goes along with it. And that's that kind of what this feels like to me a little bit. It feels like they they just came up with the story after the fact. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be talking completely out of my butt here, but it's kind of how it feels because when you smell this, does it smell like London uh, after a rain or any major city after a rain? Hell no. <laughs> no, not at all. Is it? No. Not unless uh, a city after a rain smells like a, a bit of smoke and woods, then then I guess it's possible. You know, if you got a lumber mill uh, that's belching out some smoke across the street from you after the rain, and maybe the rain made the smoke kind of fall down to the earth a little bit, you know, raining some chemical sludge down onto your face from the heavens above, then, uh, then, it, then it could be. But I don't think that's what they're going for here. I'm pretty sure it's not anyway. Now with saying what I just said, I don't mean that the fragrance smells like chemical sludge. Uh, I don't think it does, but it's definitely not as citrusy as you might expect, you know, with the name having citrus uh, in it. You're expecting a certain level of citrus at that point, or at least I would expect that. Like if you have a fragrance and you name it Black Woods, then you would expect woods is what I'm trying to say. So if you spray it on and instead you get a marine fragrance with a ton of ambergris and no woodiness to be found, you would have a little question mark above your head. You would look like one of those soldiers in Metal Gear Solid staring at a box, you know, just a box, just a fragrance without what it says on the friggin' label. So let's give it a little spray here on the, on the good old arm. 
the fragrance receptacle over here. It's, it's a great scent strip. You should try it out sometimes. Spray your arm, spray your hand. You know, fragrance smells really good coming off there. These little papers, you, know, you can't trust these, man. They lie, papers lie. So this does have a bit of citrus off the top. It's got bergamot, that's the citrus of choice for black citrus. A Little bit green, fresh, sweet, fairly juicy, smells pretty good, but very quickly it gets enveloped, wrapped up by the black part of black citrus. So that's really the, the main part of the name that you need to pay attention to, not as much the citrus part, because it begins to shape shift. It takes on more of a green facet from cardamom in the opening. The rindiness of the bergamot fades away pretty quickly. And then you get birch that comes in. It's gonna give you a smoky woodiness and it starts to overpower things, starts to become the most prominent thing in the fragrance. You get violet, you get mate, and a mate is gonna give you this, this interesting touch that I think uh, is gonna turn off a lot of people. And I think could be one of the main things that drives people away from this fragrance and makes them think that it's not worth buying or wearing. Also got patchouli in the base, so you're gonna get additional earthiness mixing together with that mate and with that birch, that smoke that's coming from the woodiness. And it really is more of a mate meets earthy woodiness than anything else, more woods than earth but the citrus part of this fragrance gets uh, gets a swirly. It gets his head dunked in a toilet and uh, it never comes back out. <laughs> it's only there to lead you in uh, by the hand for a brief leading moment, you know, to, to hold your hand into the darker, heavier notes. And then it just bails and leaves you there. So you're promised a gothic citrus, but the citrus is only there for five minutes and then it's gone. And when that's the selling point of the fragrance, uh, that's not great, you know? It's, uh, you're promised one thing and then delivered another. I don't think the fragrance actually smells bad. I don't love it, I'm not in love with it, but I think it's nice. I do like it, it's a little change of pace. You know, I like the woodiness. I like green fragrances, a little green in my scent. That never scared me away, but a lot of people hate that. And so, there's a lot working against it, we'll say that much. Now, presentation-wise, I dig it, but I'm also kind of a dweeb in the sense that um, there are very few fragrance brands that do the exact same bottle all the way across the board without changing anything except for the label on the front that I like the presentation of. A lot of times I feel like they all just run together and this is just a personal hang up. I realize that a lot of people out there do not share this view, but uh, when that happens, I don't like it and it makes me almost not want to check out more stuff from the brand, which is a stupid thing. And uh, I get over it, but it's what happens. So let me throw out some examples to you so you know what I'm talking about. This house is one because all the fragrances look like this, which I like the presentation. I think the bottle looks cool, little hockey puck action going on. You've got the little uh, logo on the bottom there. You got a magnetic cap. That's a good touch. Well, my monkey brain loves that. I just, ooh, look at it, look at it, look at it. I like that. I like the logo on top of the cap. Atomizer on it's really good. The box is pretty. It's got a slip cover. Well, we all love slip covers. Um, so that's cool. It says black citrus on it. And then it has the uh, very artistic choice to have black citrus written all around it. And it makes it look like a little pattern. You get this big fat honking box. Almost looks like a crappy Invicta watch box. That's what it makes me think of. Wilhelm Parfumery right on the front there. Yeah, can you see that? Hopefully it's in focus, whatever. We're still moving along. Badge code right there, lifts up like that and your bottle sits down in here and it's got a nice little velvety feeling to it. So that's nice, I, I like that. But again, my, my simple child brain, when I see all the fragrances lined up from the house, and yeah, it looks clean because they're all in the same presentation, the same style and all that, but they all look the exact same, except the name changes. Uh, I just kind of tune out. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, my eyes don't get brought to any particular one. You know, I don't bounce around and look at all the different colors and stuff like that. I just kind of go mm, and zone out. So the same thing happens uh, with, to a lesser extent, Le Labo. Uh, the same thing happens with definitely, um, oh, what is that brand? Hermetica. Hermetica, when I look at that, I, I don't care about any of them, frankly. Uh, and it's weird because Hermetica, going off on a tangent, but it's like an offshoot of uh, Mimo. And I love Mimo. 
Memo Paris. I really like that. And then uh, Floraiku. I really like that. You see, you see the similarities, different, different things going on on the front that differentiate the fragrances. But Hermetica, my God, those bottles are ugly to begin with, all the green ones. And then they just slap a gold font on there, you know, gold text with a different name of each fragrance on there. I cannot tell you how fast I became disinterested in the house. <laughs> They could have been the best things ever, and I would be missing out just because I, I, I blank out. I see all the green bottles just all lined up. They look the exact same, like an army of them, and nothing differentiates them apart, and I just zone out. And uh, I realize that a lot of you out there are going to say, hey, man, that's so stupid. That's so dumb, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just telling you that's what happens. And so that happens with these. Less so with these because they do look really pretty. And so I can I can more quickly overlook it with these than Hermetica because I think those bottles are some of the ugliest I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, that happens. Overall, the performance on this one is pretty good. Maybe I'd say slightly above average. Maybe you would think it would be more beast mode. I know the name Citrus, you would think, well, it won't last that long. But then in reality, it's more woodiness and all this other stuff going on. So you might think, you know, it's going to project heavily. It's going to last a long time. It's going to do this, that, the other thing. It's fine. It's fine, it's good. It's a niche fragrance, it's eau de parfum, it's a little bit costly, so you would expect it to at least be a little bit above average, and I'd say that's where it slots in, you know. It's nothing to get crazy about, unless maybe you go crazy with the trigger, you know, spray like a madman, then you might get some some better performance out of it, but it's not bad, it's fine. As far as seasons, all that stuff, more fall for me. I mean, anytime you say something is a fall fragrance, that means you could wear it in spring as well. Assuming you live somewhere where you have four seasons and you get that kind of neutral weather pattern through spring and fall. So either one, uh, I would reach for it more really in winter than I would summer just because that citrus fades out pretty quickly. And honestly, it's only really refreshing in the first few minutes, the citrus, because it, it does start to turn black or get darker, or heavier uh, pretty quickly, pretty quickly. So during the summer, I wouldn't wear it. Frankly, I don't think it would smell that nice. I think it would come across kind of crappy, kind of gross. Uh, I wouldn't go for it. As of now, I only own two fragrances from this house, Black Citrus and Morning Chess. Morning Chess is really nice. That's a good fragrance. You can wear that without really worrying about it at all. Black Citrus, you run the risk of having some people think that it's not so nice. I think it's still good myself. Uh, like I said, I like it. I don't love it though. I'm not in love with it. There are definitely some parts of the fragrance that I think could be shorn up. And I think that your average everyday person uh, who's not into niche fragrances, doesn't know anything about niche fragrances, frankly, would probably think it sucks. Like they would probably not like it much at all. I know that sounds harsh, uh, but I do think that's what your uh, average person is going to be feeling with this one. I'd say my favorite part of the fragrance is kind of the transitional period from the opening into the mid, which some people may not like at all, but where you can still pick up a bit of that citrus and then uh, the birch and everything else comes in and kind of swallows it up. To me, that that's an interesting part of the scent. I like it. The citrus in the opening is not anything that's going to knock your socks off. You know, when you're talking about niche citrus openings, it can't hang with the big boys, but it's pleasant enough. And then the far dry down, I dig as well. I mean, I like that smokiness. I like that woodiness. I like the green tinge. So those are the parts that I like. All right, guys, I am out of here. Wilhelm Parfumery Black Citrus. It's good. It's not great. Thank you guys for hanging with me and uh, stay safe out there. I'll see you all again with another fragrance video before too long. See you guys later.